OK, so the lesson aims is to identify what STEM subjects are and the importance of making them exciting in today's world, especially for girls. Uh, also recognize the development of communication because the person I'm sat next to right now has had a massive, massive impact on the way we communicate, literally. Um, so we'll, we'll get to meet Sir Robin Saxby as well. Right, so today we are looking at uh, what STEM is and whether it's for you. In the chat, children, if you have them, actually we won't have time, move on, reprogrammed. Right, so STEM, as you can see, stands for science, technology, engineering and mathematics. Now, three of these subjects we're relatively familiar with, science, technology and mathematics. However, engineering is something a little bit more uncommon, particularly in primary schools. And my one message to you today is that whatever you want to do out of those STEM subjects, they all overlap, but particularly with engineering. Engineering really does consist of science, technology and mathematics. So what does it mean to be an engineer? Engineers are like being super inventors and problem solvers. They design, build and fix things that make the world better. They work on interesting things such as complex electronics, games, cars and even buildings and bridges. So being an engineer is like being a super smart builder who loves to make amazing things. Now, there's a huge shortage with STEM subjects in the industry with girls. 26% of girls in university graduate with a core STEM related subject, which, as you can tell, is very low. 19% of girls take engineering at computing at university. So that means 81% of graduates in engineering and computing are boys. Maths and science are the most popular with girls at 40%, but as you can see, that's still below half. So in short, there is a shortage of skilled women in STEM subjects in the workforce. Now, you may have one of these skills, whether you're a boy, whether you're a girl, you may have one of these skills that you can see on, on your screens. So these are essential life skills. You may be a great team player, but you lack confidence. You may be excellent at problem solving, but you lack a bit of creativity. Point being, you can develop each one of these skills and it really does take a special person to recognise that and acknowledge where your areas of development and improvements can be. Now, we're focusing on communication today because communication has a massive impact on the way we operate, the way we live our lives. And if you just look at these kind of images that you see with communication from the kind of stone age you know right the way through to the first wireless communication using smoke you've got pigeon carriers the pony express which i genuinely didn't think existed but it did in the in the 50s in america and moving on to other forms of communication which in incorporate digital technology so the telegraph the radio old phones in the 50s and 60s, the dial phone, and of course, the World Wide Web that revolutionized our world. But in particular, today, we are looking at this device here, which is the smartphone, because the gentleman that sat next to me has had a massive impact on the way we communicate, regardless of the type of device that we use. And you'll find out a little bit more about that. So the evolution of communication with telephones looks a little bit like this. So you can see we've got kind of old phones to, to brick mobile phones, to now smartphones and even smart watches, okay? That's just a quick graphical view of how communication has changed with, with phones. With that, unfortunately, there does come some negatives, all right? While there are many benefits of using technology such as social media, you are open to negative reactions and harsh comments. This wasn't the case when I was a child and I was at school because there was no social media. However, for you guys in year six and year five, probably haven't experienced life without smartphones and without social media, even though some of you are too young to technically be using social media, but we know the majority of you do. 
one thing you need to take on board is that you all have something called a digital footprint. OK, so everything you do online, regardless of whether you've deleted it from your phone or deleted a message, it is stored somewhere on a server somewhere in the world and that will be there forever. So be very, very conscious about the messages you leave people. Think twice about what you're saying to somebody, whether you could potentially upset them, because that will be there somewhere online forever. Employers, so when you go looking for your first job or you go to an interview, will look for your digital footprint. They will search for you. So just bear in mind, as wonderful technology is, there are some negatives that come along with it. Now, before I introduce you to Sir Robin Saxby, I want you to watch a really short um, clip of an organisation that Sir Robin used to be the CEO of. So that's the highest kind of person in the company. Technology impacts the way we work, play, live and learn. Arm first changed the world by fueling the smartphone revolution. And now, from the tiniest sensors to the world's most powerful supercomputers, Arm is building the future of computing. We make it possible for AI to work everywhere. We are defining what will become the future mobile experience. And we are redefining what's possible in cloud computing, transforming the automotive industry and enabling a thriving IoT economy. Our vision for trust, security and sustainability in computing drives industry standards forward. Every major electronics company in the world has products built on ARM. That the gentleman sat next to me, Sir Robin Saxby, was the first CEO of ARM in 1991. So he has had a massive, massive impact on the way we communicate, particularly as 250 billion of these microprocessors that can be found in smartphones, in tablets, in laptops, etc., have been sold or manufactured by Arm in Cambridge, um, thanks to, to Sir Robin Saxby. So I'm going to pass him over and he's going to take the hot seat. And you will have an opportunity to ask questions, although I do have two peers from Little Thurrock Primary School that are here with me that will also be asking Sir Robin some questions. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, it's lovely to be online with you, but just to remind you, when we started on, we couldn't do online. The Internet came a bit after we started the company. So looking at myself, uh, what I would say to you, particularly as school kids, um, I followed my passion all my life. So I was given a, a, an electronics kit at the age of eight, bells, buzzers. I'm going to show you some pictures in a minute. And that's when I got really interested in electricity and circuits. I had a TV repair business at the age of 13. My dad would find customers in the pub with broken televisions and I'd repair them. And back in those days, the, the televisions were black and white. And my biggest earner was replacing a cathode ray tube uh, to make money. My first job uh, was in color television design. I actually was involved with a team of engineers designing the, the first color television in the UK. It was called Rankbush Murphy. Um, I was hired into Motorola Semiconductors in 1973. That was a big expanding uh, American company, and they taught me a lot about sales and marketing as opposed to just engineering. I was involved with a startup called ES2, European Silicon Structures, making using advanced technology e-beam machines. The bad news is the e-beam machine didn't work properly and uh, the business model was basically broken. So having had a, a failed startup to start with, um, the next one was going to be better. So I was the founding CEO of Arm with just 12 engineers and me. So now, the origin of the Arm architecture, you can do lots of searches on the web. Originally, Arm was the Acorn risk machine. It was a chip that was designed within Acorn. And uh, we turned it into Arm. And with only £1.75 million pounds of cash, and this team of 12 engineers, we created the, the world's most prolific global standard uh, for digital microprocessors. And you've seen from the earlier headlines that was uh, 
250 billion ARM chips have been shipped. But what I should explain, the key to the business model of ARM was we would never build chips. I said we, we'll build chips over my dead body. And the good news is I'm still alive and ARM doesn't make chips. So what ARM does, it, it, the way to think of this is we license digital engine blueprints that everybody puts into their own chips, whether that's Apple, Acorn, VLSI technology, Sharp, etc. So, and the good news is the business model was different. We said we will not manufacture, we will license and we get a royalty on every chip. And the good news is that everything I said would happen in the first on brochure has actually happened, but it's actually been much, much bigger than I expected because of the creation of the internet and the demand for mobile communication. Questions from various schools around the country, um, and Sir Robin will answer those questions. In the meantime, because we do have 22 minutes, if your school does have a question, please put it in the chat and I will try and get Sir Robin to, to answer those questions if possible. Handing over to the stars of the show. No pressure. There's about a thousand people watching. Come and grab a seat here. They want to see you. Shall I get you another chair? Yeah. Make sure you introduce yourselves, guys. Hi, I'm Oscar. A bit louder. You need to go right close, 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 close. Guys, can you hear Oscar? Say that again. Hi, I'm Oscar. And I'm Mia. Um, it's all school in Mrs. Shaw's class and they knew five. Um, they said Android or Apple. So the answer is both and even more than that. So ARM is in every Android phone, every Apple phone, every Amazon phone, every Huawei phone. So ARM is actually in all of them. And the reason why this is possible, what I'd like you to think about in terms of what ARM is, you know, in a car, you have an engine, right? And you have different size engines. So what ARM actually does, it designs digital engines, small ones, big ones, whatever. And we've become, we've created the most popular engine on the planet that every, just about every electronics company on the planet is using ARM technology. So that's the good news. Um, they've also said, where do you see mobile phones in the future? So what I think we're going, what it, what is actually going to happen is I think we're going to go into an area of wearable devices. So you've probably already seen people have got glasses now that actually, and again, some of the startups I'm involved in, one of them is called Plessy. They're making things called micro LEDs. So I think the phone of the future, you won't pick it out of your pocket. You'll be actually wearing it. You'll be talking to it and you'll be communicating through it. Yes. Warren Primary School, Mr. Kitchener in ZH. What did your parents want you to do as a child? So the good news is my parents didn't want me to, they wanted me to do what I wanted to do. So they didn't tell me what to do. They encouraged me to follow my passions. And I think that's really useful because you do have a lot of parents who tell their kids to do things that they don't want. You probably noticed the artist David Hockney. If you look at most people who have achieved amazing things, quite often they've done what was not recommended to them by their parents. And, and, and so my starting point would be, yes, people can give you advice on what makes you money or what might make you happy. But I think within your inner self, if you can find what you really love doing, that's likely to make you a happier person. E.T. has said, if you could do another job, what would it be? Uh, well, one of my favourite hobbies is skiing. I actually set myself a goal to ski one more day per year until I die. So probably I would have been a ski teacher. London and Hill Primary. Um, in Miss Matthews' class, Molly in Year 6 has said, what is your most proudest moment? Um, so in all honesty, I am most happy when I help other people deliver more than they expect to do. So, so basically, when somebody is stuck, if I can help them unstick themselves, that, that's, I think, the most satisfying. 
page in year six has said, what makes technology special? So I don't think technology is special, to be honest with you. Uh, human beings are actually quite fortunate because we have brains and we're connected and we have some thinking ability more than animals. But actually, if I look outside of the wonderful world we live in, and the sad, unfortunate situation is we're not treating the world very well at the moment. We've got challenges with climate change, etc. So I see technology as a tool to improve the quality of human life. So again, one of the things I'm most happy about with ARM is how people are using the technology in deprived communities to make their lives better. I'm pleased that ARM is being used to fix some health problems and so on. Right. Sir Robin, thank you so much. There's one more question, but the answer needs to be just one word. OK, the question is, and again, I'm going to go back to you guys. It's from Miss Shaw in Christleton School. Android or Apple? Apple. Oh, no. on that night ladies and gents thank you so much i'm android all day long but um i hope you've enjoyed that but, but variety variety is the spice of life there variety. Isn't one right answer there isn't there isn't um but yeah let's just say goodbye to everyone thank you so much you've been amazing teachers if your microphones are working it'd be great to to hear you say goodbye um, I will be sending a feedback link out. That would be amazing just to get the, some feedback the, from you. All. The other thing I'd like to do, I'd like to thank all the hardworking teachers. I had some hardworking teachers who helped me. And what I would actually say, if, if this can work, if there are other questions uh, and you can feed them in through Ravi, uh, I'm happy to try and answer them online. Brilliant. Thank you so much for your time, Sir Robin. And thank you very much to AIT. Please do register with AIT teachers and pupils. So Google archives of IT and I will be sending the links out to, to teachers along with the, the feedback. Thank you very much.